Hello, everyone. Let me know if you can hear me and see me, please. I'm just going to log on to my YouTube myself. Okay. Can you hear me? If you could just give me a thumbs up, that would be great. Zach, can you hear me? Yeah. You can hear me on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Can everyone hear me? I'm just going to um, pop the uh, image numbers into the chat. And there's one that I actually forgot to add to my list when I put the list up. So I will add that in now, but I will say the numbers as I'm adding them onto the canvas. So don't worry. Okay, you can hear me, great, okay. Uh, just a disclaimer to say that um, Miss Eve did not want to go to sleep and my husband is out this evening, so she is in the background. So I'm hoping she doesn't disturb, disturb us, um, but if she did, does, I'm just gonna have to tend to her and come back. So I've just added all of the image numbers into the chat. I'll pin it at the top. Just let me know uh, where you're joining from, what time it is, where you are, and if you are a professional crafter or a hobby crafter. Just let me know in the chat. And if you speak to me on Instagram, you might have a different name on YouTube. So just let me know if you're someone that I know, because um, sometimes people have different names on Instagram and YouTube. Okay. So I've got the technology a bit better this time. However, show in stream. I need to just work out how to. Washington and it's 1 p.m. Welcome, Selena. You're in Orlando, Anne, and it's 4 p.m. and you're a professional crafter. Trinidad and Tobago, love it. Wish I was in Trinidad and Tobago right now. Um, spear of the moment. Oh, hi, Karen. Thank you for joining. Now, I need to work out how to um, share my... Now, can you see my design space? I want to do it in a way where you, I can also see myself. Hmm, how did I do this last time? Bear with me, guys. I'm still used to um, I'm still used to getting used to all of this technology. Oh, St. Kitts and Nevis. Oh, lovely. Boston, UK. Is there a Boston in UK? Whoa, that's new to me. Connecticut, beginner, Texas, 3 p.m. Oh, I love it. Everyone from all over the world. Right. Now. <laughs> Show and stream. Ah, okay. And then I can change it different ways. Now I've worked it out. Okay. So can you guys see my design space? Let me know if you can see my design space um, in the background. I should have become very small and then you should mainly just see my design space. So just let me know. Ariana, hi. Yeah. No, I'm in the UK as well, but I'm here from Venezuela. Lovely. Okay. Excellent. So I've had some people who have said in the chat that they are beginners. And in this tutorial, I don't go through all of the beginner parts of um, Cricut Design Space in terms of, you know, how to use the features, how to use layers, um, how to slice, how to duplicate, um, because my tutorials are kind of more aimed at intermediate, advanced. However, if you are struggling to follow along and you want to do some kind of baseline work, I would suggest having a look at Cricut Learn. Um, you can find that by just Googling Cricut Learn and Cricut have lots of free um, tutorials that you can join, but also I'm happy to recommend other crafters who do more kind of basic tutorials. But this is going to be recorded. So everyone just try to be patient. Remember that everybody is working at different levels. 
Um, some people will pick up really quickly. Sometimes I might need to repeat things, but if the pace is too fast or too slow, just remember that this is going to be recorded. So you can go back to this on my YouTube channel and watch it at any, any time. So don't feel like you have to keep up with everything. If you'd rather just use the time to have a chat, um, or just to watch the process, then that's absolutely fine. So just wanted to just make that clear. So um, here is what we're going to design today. Oh, make it a bit smaller. So this is what we're going to design today. So it's a shaker cake topper. Um, all of the images are from Cricut Design Space. I've uploaded the, or I've put all of the image numbers in the chat and I've also added them on all of my social media channels including my YouTube channel um, so if you want to just lift and copy and paste you should be able to do that so this is what we're going to be creating by the end of today now I'm going to say a disclaimer it might not look exactly like this one I had to mess around with this because when I originally designed it I didn't like it when I made it I was really unhappy with it the back was not clear acetate. I actually had another egg inside and I couldn't get my colors right. And I was just really unhappy with it. And then when I decided to change it to acetate, it just worked perfectly. But what that meant is I had to make some changes with the ears because the ears before were coming down into where this acetate place was, which wasn't a problem because it had a solid back. But when I changed it to acetate, um, I had to slice a lot. So I'm going to get it, try and get it to look as similar as this one um it should be pretty much like 90 percent the same but there might be some slight differences so selena just asked yes it's going to be saved yeah. onto my youtube channel so as soon as this live is finished i think they automatically save now actually so it will save automatically and then just to say that i'm going to have a second part which is going to be assembly assembling the cake topper which will be next week wednesday the 5th at the same time 9 p.m um, but I won't be doing a cutting. So if you guys can cut in between, um, I was just a bit more, uh, what's the word, um, savvy this time. And I actually cut this cake topper twice. So when I made it, I cut it twice. So I've actually got everything pretty much cut for me to make it the next time. And I absolutely hate cutting. Anyone who's been on my lives will know, like I really just really, really just dis dislike it. So for me, cutting out the cake toppers at the same time, just made sense for me so cut, cut them out and then we will assemble together but if you want to just come along and watch me assemble you don't have to have anything cut you can just come along to watch and you can make it for next easter if you want okay so we're going to get started um what i'm going to do is i'm going to hide this one um because i don't want to confuse you guys but i might just refer back to it at points um to remind myself how it's supposed to look i have actually got the cake oh I've got the cake topper here so I'll be using this for my own mental guide you kind of can't see it because I've got I've got this really fancy light because it's really dark it's nighttime hi baby it's nighttime here and it's really dark in this part of my dining room so I've got this light so you probably can't see but this is kind of the cake topper in real life so I'm going to be referring to this and it's useful for me to be able to show you physically the cake topper so that I can kind of try and explain the layers when you see it in in physically it kind of sometimes makes a bit more sense so let's get started so let me hide this so the best place for us to start probably is with our egg so um we're gonna go into our images and we're gonna search for our our egg so the egg is a uh, hashtag always add the hashtags otherwise you won't be able to find um you won't be able to find the, um, the, the, the image. So the first one is the egg is hashtag M. I'm going to make it capital because I'm not sure if that makes a difference. Well, M4495B22E. It has M4495B2EE. -E. And you should get this um, egg. Now, the reason why I have this egg is because, <laughs> as I said, when I first made this cake topper, I made it with a different egg. And this is the same dimensions as that egg. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to, this is going to be our acetate layer. So what I'm going to do is we obviously don't want these lines. So I'm going to go into contour, which is down on, 
I'll just make, I made it a bit bigger, sorry, just so it's easier to work with. Then we're going to go into contour, bottom right hand corner, and we're going to hide all, hide all contours. And that's going to give us this solid shape. So I'm going to change this to grey. For me personally, when I work with acetate, I always make it grey. Um, it just it just works for me. But obviously, you can make this whatever colour you want. And if you decided that you didn't want to do clear acetate on the back and you wanted to have a solid shape in the background, you could just make this whatever colour you wanted to, whatever cardstock you wanted to. So that is still an option for you. I just like the way that it looked with the see-through acetate. So we're going to make this egg. Four point eight eight five inches wide, so four point eight eight five inches wide, which should take you. I'll grab my pencil so I can see, which should mean that it should be six point eight five six inches high, right? So if you make it four point eight eight five, you'll get you should get the height that you need. What we need to remember here is to duplicate. So as I said, say, for example, you wanted to have a solid background. You might have some really nice Easter card. You would just make this your solid background, and this would be your acetate, which would go on top. But as I'm going to make it the way I did, both of my layers are acetate. So these are the two layers that are acetate. And when we assemble, I'll show you how you add your, your, um, your confetti. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my phone on just so that I can see, because I can't actually see the chat. So I'm going to use my phone so that I can make sure that if you guys are asking me any questions, I am answering them in, in a timely manner. You can't find the egg. Hmm. Okay. The egg is by... Um... The egg is by DIY Crafts Tutorials, Michaela. So if you search her as a as a uh, designer, is there anyone else who's having any problems with finding that egg? Um, <clears throat> what you could just do is just go in and just search Easter egg. It, don't, it doesn't have to be that, that particular one. Just search any Easter egg shape and then just change the dimensions to the dimensions that I mentioned. So it doesn't have to be that particular egg. I'm not sure why you can't find it. Um, but if anyone else has any issues with finding any of the images, let me know. So, so now we've got our double acetate. So I'm just going to align these. I'm going to center them and I'm going to group. So this is where we start off with. Next we are going to now actually sorry i should not have ungrouped um i'm going to duplicate this and you'll see why in a second so now what we're going to do is we're going to create our border and this is where we're going to use the offset tool but instead of doing an offset instead of going out we're going to come in so we're going to use it inset now when I've done tutorials before, whether they've been live or pre-recorded, it's really, really difficult to tell you exactly what offset to use because it, it really depends on the size of the image at the time that you apply the offset or the inset. I might have applied this offset or inset when the egg was a different size to the size it ended up as. So I can only do this kind of by eye, but it's good for you to kind of see how the offset and inset tools work rather than me just telling you what the dimensions are it's helpful for you to kind of go through that process so what we want to make sure move this down a bit sorry so that you can um see what we want to make sure is that we have quite a thick a thick um border the reason being is that we are going to use foam tape now in the UK, we can't get very thin foam tape. You can get a thinner foam tape in um, in the US, and there's some amazing strips on my um, on my Amazon storefront as well from Asteria Stasfanteras, which are really great. But I normally use the roll, and the roll is is it's not thick, but it's not the thinnest. So what you don't want is to have a really thin border because then you're going to see your 
foam tape, which obviously you don't want to. So I've applied an offset here. I'm going to keep going. <coughs> Sorry, I'm not well. So mine is minus 0 0.5. That's just what kind of by eyeballing it. So I'm going to apply it. I'm just going to have a look at my, that looks about right. And then I'm going to slice this. And this is going to give me my first border. So I'll go ahead and delete everything that I don't want. Now, I personally like to uh, change the colors as I go along. So I'm going to make this a purpley color, but obviously you can use whatever color you want. Now, this is going to go on top of our egg. So you can imagine that that there's going to be foam tape behind this so you want to make sure that it's not too thin if it's really thin it's going to be very fiddly so also it will help to give your cake topper a bit more sturdiness now i'm going to use the inset tool again um on this shape to get an inner border i tend to do it back to front i don't know why i do it like that some people might work out the other way but this is just the way that it works for me so I'm just going to take it back to zero so it can kind of reset. <clears throat> oh, God, it didn't reset. Anyway, it didn't reset. But what we want is like a nice thin border. So mine one was 0 0.1 minus 0 0.139. But once you use the inset and offset tools, they kind of go a bit funny. So you just have to kind of mess around with it. Um, the code I'm in the chat is different to what you said to the egg. Oh, is it? Sorry, Easter egg. My name B22E3D. Do you know, maybe it's the way it's laid out in the chat. Everything is after each other, which isn't helpful. It was in a nice list, but maybe, hopefully you found the egg now. Okay, so now this is gonna be our inner border. Now you could easily skip this stage, that you don't have to add an inner border. I just think it looks nice. Uh, the more layers you use, the nicer it looks, but you know, you don't have to do that. Okay, so that's, we're gonna have three layers on this cake topper, three layers on this border, sorry. So now I'm gonna do an offset. And the reason why I'm doing it back to front is because when I made the cake topper, I think I made it and then I didn't like it and I added another offset. But I'm now going to use the offset on the purple and I'm going to add an offset. So this is 0 0.139, but like I said, there's no right or wrong. Now, the good thing about this offset is that this gold part or brown part is bigger than your, um, just slightly bigger than your egg. And what you will find is that that's a lot more forgiving. And if, for example, you stick the foam tape right at the edge of the acetate, you'll see when we assemble, if you stick it right at the edge of the acetate, it's, um, let me put my phone up here so I don't keep looking down. <coughs> if you put it right at the, at the side of the acetate, the foam tape can sometimes stick out the edge of the border. But if you do it this way, where you make the offset border just slightly bigger it just gives you a bit more wiggle room so that you don't have to be as um, precise when you're using your foam tape so um i'm gonna align and center these uh and group it and then i'm gonna move it over here and add it with my um with my acetate so that is the main egg done so um, you could obviously apply this same technique to any shape. If you wanted to make a shaker that was a square or a triangle, any shape that you want to make a shaker, this is the um, process that you would go through, okay? So this is what we're going to start with. I'm just going to move this over here so you can get out of our way. So <coughs> just to say that my cake topper in total is about, I think it's about seven in, about seven seven inches wide. It's quite a high cake topper because of the ears, um, but it's about seven inches wide, and I think it's about ten inches high. So it's quite a high cake topper, but that's just because it's got ears sticking out the top. Um, so, is cake toppers are not normally that tall, but it doesn't look 
um, out of proportion. But just so you know what size, just in case you're, I would always work out the size of your cake topper based on the circle main shaker shape that you're using. So um, use that as a guide. So here we go. Now we're going to do the ears. <clears throat> so let's um, trying to see if there's somewhere that I can rest my phone. It's not gonna. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now we're gonna do. We're gonna do the. Oh no! Please, what's happening? Uh, now we're going to add our ears. So the ears are hashtag. Oh, I don't have my ears written down. Um, bear with me a second. I'm gonna close down everything that I don't need. Uh, way too many things open on my phone. Wow, I've got about five million tabs open on my phone. Okay, so let me go to my notes because it's where I've got all my things written down. So we're going to do what we did. I say is so M three three five A one nine oh six. So M three three five A one nine oh six. Okay, and you get these um, black bunny ears. So what I was saying before is, to be honest, I might be able to. Because I'm starting from scratch, I might be able to do it slightly differently. So before, basically, when I made my cake topper before, the ears were like down here, which didn't matter because this wasn't acetate. It wasn't clear. So they could go like I could send it to the back and you wouldn't see it. But then I changed it. So I had to find a way to hide these ears. So oh, sorry, let me just group this. So what I did was I sliced out the ears. So I went over to, um, oh gosh, not images, sorry, shapes, and grab this uh, <laughs> half oval shape. Oh, don't do that. This new design space thing, it just, it just keeps doing crazy things. Right. So we're going to slice our ears because basically we don't want... Um, we don't want them to overlap with the acetate. So, I mean, there's absolutely no right or wrong way of doing this. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going to kind of put it here. And I'm going to use a slice tool on the bottom right-hand side. And I'm going to slice out my ears. Now I'm just going to add them on the back and I'm going to see, like, am I happy with them? Are they big enough? They look good to me. And um, Oh, my phone is locked. Um, what you want to make sure is that these ears are not going to uh, go down here because if there's any of it down here, you will be able to see it through your acetate. So I'm going to make the ears now that I've sliced them. And I don't know if this is going to work. We shall, we shall see because I didn't slice them last time, but 5.33 inches wide, 5.33 inches wide. Um, let's see how that looks. That looks good. Um, it look, they look like they might be a little bit smaller than my ears, but to be honest, I felt like my ears were too big. So it's fine. Right, I'm going to change the colour of this to um, whatever colour you're going to use for your ears. Um, and then we're going to duplicate this. Oh, no, this is not going to work, is it? Sorry, guys, I just realised I've done something the wrong way around. Right, ignore me. Because I've sliced it, I can't duplicate and add the... Um, pink part to the back 
And this is what happens when you make a design and you try to redo the design when you're about to share it. So I'm probably going to confuse you guys here, but basically... You're hungry. Oh, you want to open it? So hungry. You're so hungry. Oh, okay. Squeeze it. Coming out? Yeah? Nice? Sorry, Eve just wants to have a new yogurt. So before, sorry, before we slice out the, um, let me just make sure that my phone doesn't, um, no, mum, mummy's, mummy's doing something now, Eve. I'm just going to switch my auto lock off. Sorry, guys, this does not look very professional, but I'm at the point where I have no option right now but to have my child with me. So here we go. Right. So. You Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to go and lay down? Yeah. Okay. Careful. 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 It's okay. Go on. Go and lay down. Okay. So, um, yes, it will be saved for later, Monica. So, before we slice out, sorry, duplicate, and we're going to... Um, we're going to hide all contours and we're going to change this to pink and we're going to change this one to um, whatever color we're going to use, right? And I'm going to send this back. So the reason why I couldn't do it the other way is because the shape was not closed, I would not be able to duplicate and contour out. If any of the shape is open, doesn't close, fully, you cannot do the contouring. So that's the reason why. And this is going to be a little bit clunky because of that. I apologize, guys, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to apply an offset. Um, let's try 0 0.01, see how that comes out. That looks okay. I'm going to probably make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to try 0 0.015. So let's try that and see how that looks. Okay. So yeah, and then I'm going to make this white. So now we have three shapes. Now, this is probably where I'm going to confuse you guys a bit, and this wouldn't be how I would like to do this, but as I messed it up last time. Um, so let's see. If I if I group this, let's see. I'm going to see if there's a way. Now, what I'm going to do with you guys, because I want this to be straightforward for you, I'm going to be slicing out and doing all that because that's just too confusing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this shape. It's the easiest way to do it. I'm going to unlock it, and then I can adjust this in a way where it does not come through the acetate. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making it thinner and longer, If that makes sense, let me know if you're with me. So I'm just going to keep readjusting until I'm confident that this is not going to be visible. So I've ended up with the ears, the widest part of the offset of the ears is 4.213. And the height is 5.216. But there is no right or wrong way. I'm just I'm just adjusting it. Now, if I hide my acetate layer, we can test out and see. When we send this to the back, we want to be sure. So you can see here, you cannot see the ears. So you could even adjust it a bit more if you wanted to make it a bit wider. But you just have to make sure that it's not visible. So there's another way that I did it where I sliced out each layer and then I welded back the shape and sliced again, but that, that's quite complicated and I want to make sure that I'm making it as straightforward for you guys as possible. So now we've got our ears, we've got our bunny ears, and we have our main part of our shaker, yeah? And we also have our acetate, which I've hidden, so I'm going to unhide it. So... This is what we're working with. Next, let's do the, uh, so I'm gonna cross off my list. 
so that I can see. So next we're going to do the feet. So the feet, oh gosh, I, so I keep pressing new instead of image. I don't know why. So the feet is hashtag. Um, hashtag M4567. E seven four eight. So hashtag M four five six seven D seven four eight. This little cute little foot's gonna come up. Now this now this foot looks like it's got three easy layers, which would be what we would ideally want. However, if you ungroup this. You can see that, not if you do that, but you can see that this is going to cut out as tiny shapes. Now, you're more than welcome to leave it like that. For me personally, it's a little bit fiddly. Also, you won't be able to create the same level of depth um, as the way that I'm going to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this. And then I'm going to duplicate this. You'll find a lot of images in Design Space are like this because they're designed to be made with vinyl. And when you're making things with vinyl, you want to use the least amount of vinyl as possible. And the layering is layered flat. So you're not trying to get dimension. So you're going to find a lot of images in Design Space like this, which are not designed for paper crafting. They're more designed with... Um, vinyl in mind so this is just always a good thing to think about and there's a lot of images in design space that i will do this with to kind of change them so we go to our contour and we hide all of our contours and then we're going to make this um the same pink as the one above and i'm going to make it the same yellow as the one above again no right or wrong but these are just the colors that i'm using so send to the back and then this one, I'm going to make white. And I'm going to send it to the back. And then I'm going to align all of these um, center and group. So you're left with this little foot. Now, the foot needs to be 2.0.017. And then I change the... I changed the width for some reason, don't know why, to 2.242. So it's a bit of a fatter, smaller foot. So it's wide is 2.017 and height is 2.242. <clears throat> now, obviously, we need two of these guys because we're going to um, we're gonna be doing two feet. And I'm just going to rotate them at this point. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be building up all the other images and then we will, at the end, we will then um, position everything as we want to be. So these are our two feet, pretty straightforward. <coughs> right, so I'm going to cross that off my list. Then let's do the flower. So the flower, let me... Press image this time. The flower, this is the same flower that I used in my um, Valentine's tutorial. And it's hashtag M467B. So hashtag M467B. That's going to give you a flower petal. So you get one flower petal. And um, I'm just going to change the color of this to whatever color I'm going to use. I'm going to use like a slightly off, off, I'm going to make it slightly off white because um, this white is going to be different. So we're going to make this petal. Now there's going to be, this petal is going to have five layers, this petal, sorry, this flower is going to have five layers, but two of the petals at the back are going to be slightly bigger. And I'll show you why when I assemble. So this flower, this petal, we want it to be 2.54 inches wide. And um, 
two point yeah, 2.4, it says it came up as 2.468, but 2.4, I have it as 2.47. 2 and we're going to duplicate this so that we have two of two petals of that size. I'm just going to rotate it just so you can see the layers. We're going to duplicate again and we're going to make a next petal slightly smaller. So 2.23 and then um, the height is 2, yeah, 2.169, which is fine. So we're going to duplicate this three times. So we want three of these petals. And we're just going to put them on top. So I'm just rotating so you guys can see the layers, because when you stick them down, um, you will arrange the layers in a particular way. But I'll, I'll to be honest, you could easily just center this. I'm just being a bit pedantic. So I want to show you guys how it will look kind of more in real life. So that's our flower. What you could do is you could actually cut each of these petals out in a different color. So I used eyeshadow to change the color of my flower petals. But if you have loads of lovely pastel cardstock, you could do the bottom layer pink, the next layer yellow. You know, there's no reason why you have to cut them all out in the same color. But I'm just doing I'm just doing that because I find it a bit quicker. And as you know, I hate cutting. So, right. Now, I think because these ears are seem to be a tad smaller, they seem to be a little bit smaller than my ears are, I'm going to make this flower just a little bit smaller in total because I don't want it to be um, too big. I don't want it to be too overpowering. So I've taken it down. So the biggest petal is, uh, let me just see. The total is 2.24 by 2.17. So I'm just adjusting it slightly because the ears are slightly smaller than my ears because I want, I didn't want to confuse you guys by slicing out. So I'm just adjusting it so that it's not too big, but you could leave it bigger if you want. You could even make it smaller if you want no right or wrong but that kind of looks about right to me so that's our flower now one of the things that i completely forgot about was um the center of the flower because normally when i make cake toppers with flowers i use a gem in the middle like a massive pearl gem thing embellishment but because this was something a bit more playful and fun and i didn't want it to be i didn't think it looked right um, I actually used just like a small pearl inside. So I needed something extra. So I've got the insert of a flower and I'll give you the image number. So the image number is hashtag and it's called a 3D in an enemy. I thought an, an, an enemy was a sea creature, but anyway. It kind of looks like a bit of a poppy. So it's, sorry, it's M151B3E27. So hashtag M151B3E27. No, nope, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, so I've written the number down wrong. Oh, 27, not 37, sorry, 27. Okay, so M M one five one B three E two seven, and you'll find that this flower will come up. Now, when it comes to this flower, um, we only want one thing from this. So the easiest way to do it is just to go to your shapes panel on the right hand side, and then just duplicate this little part that you want, and just change the color. And then just go ahead and then just delete this whole thing. Because otherwise, if you ungroup, then you've got to go in and delete everything individually. So this is where you'll be left with this, um, this guy. And that goes in there like that. So it's pretty cute. Uh, my one, I ended up making it 1.283. Um, inches wide and then that will just give you the right height. 
but again you know you can always change that if you want to so that's our that's the insert of our flower so next we're going to do the leaves um these are my go-to leaves that i always use in design space they're my absolute favorite ones so you would have seen me use them before um if it's not broke don't fix it so i've done the flower now we're going to do the leaves so let me get my leaves num up for you so the leaves are m10 bb 9b 5b or oh, lots of b's so m10 db 9b 5b and that will give you these flowers so I'm just going to change the color because I like to change color as I go along. Um, and I'm going to make the leaves in total. Hello. So the whole image, 2.33 inches um, wide. And uh, I think I actually ended up duplicating these, didn't I? Right. Um, and I'm going to, and I'm going to duplicate, um, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to duplicate, sorry, and I'm going to change it to green. When I made this, I just felt like there was a lot of gold and I just wanted a little contrast of the green. But again, these flowers, I'm just positioning them in a random place. Um, you can put them wherever you want to put them. So I'm just arranging everything back. So that's our flower. Um, what I'm probably going to do is... When you're when you're putting your uh what do you call it on your butterfly, you'll be able to see that you need to leave space for your butterfly. But when we're assembling, we can do that. So that's our flower and our leaves done. So next we're gonna go on to just gonna check the chat, make sure no one's sending any asking questions. So next thing we're gonna go on to is our butterfly. So the butterfly is hashtag. M four seven E seven eight D five C. So M four seven D seven eight D five C, and that's going to give you this gorgeous, gorgeous butterfly here. So gorgeous, I love it. Right. I'm going to change the color just because you know I like to change the color. And then we're going to duplicate. Now, we're going to go to contour and we're going to hide all of our contours. And I'm, I changed this to white, but obviously you can change it to any color that you want. And I'll show you guys how I created this um, kind of rainbow effect. Um, what I used on this was white glitter. If you want to create this rainbow effect and you have white glitter, try and cut this with white glitter. You can easily also cut it with white pearlescent or white textured card, but I do like the way that the glitter looks. So, um, yeah, it came out super cute. So I'm going to send it to the back, the white part to the back. Now, there are fancy, fancy ways that you could layer this with different card stock so what you could do is you could go to your contour you could just unhide one piece like there's there's things that you could do to layer this up with other other parts of other card stock um and there are loads of svgs that you can buy like that from like custom paper flowers on um etsy she has some amazing beautiful um flower um butterflies but I'm just lazy and I hate to cut. So anything that will mean that I don't need to cut, I'm going to take that route. So we're going to align and we're going to center. And then the butterfly in total, we're going to make 2.89 inches wide. So now we've got our butterfly. And our butterfly is going to sit like here. Yeah. So you'll see when you stick it down, you'll see that you'll have to kind of adjust your leaf. Oops, you'll have to adjust your leaf so that your leaves aren't kind of touching your butterfly. And again, I will talk you through how to get this um, wobbly effect, but you don't have to have that. That's completely optional. 
So let me know if you're with me, guys. No one's in the chat and I get really paranoid and I think I'm just here talking to myself. <laughs> just let me know if you're still if you're still with me, if you're just listening contently. Uh, that would be great. So butterfly done. Next we shall do. What shall we do next? Oh, oh, my light died. Oh, that's a shame. Sorry, guys. I, I got this light and I didn't charge it. So I'm going to go a bit dark now, but it doesn't matter. You're not here to see me. You're here to see the cake topper. Right. So um, now we are going to, okay, Crafty Lovely is still here. Crafted Lovely is still here. What a nice name for a crafting account. Okay, so now we are going to move on to, what should we do next? Let's do the text. Okay, great. Sorry, I know I'm moving really fast, um, but most people don't design this as I'm talking. Some people do. Some people last time, when I did the Valentine's one, literally I did the Valentine's one, I went to sleep. And then people sent me pictures of the Valentine's cake top when I woke up in the morning. I was just like, what? So people did design and cut and made like before I'd even woken up. That was amazing. Um, I'm really sorry. I honestly wanted to do this a bit more. What's the word? Um, give you guys a bit more time before Easter, because I know that a lot of you do celebrate Easter and you might want to put this on an Easter cake top uh, cake or you might, have to want, you might have wanted to sell them to customers. But Life is just very, very busy for me at the moment, and I'm just trying to look after myself and um, not push myself too much. So, um, yeah, hence why we're making this suit so close to Easter. But anyway, it is what it is. So what should we do next? Let's do the text. So I've had a lot of people say to me, oh, that's really nice. Um, that's a really nice font. What font is that? Nine times out of 10, if I'm making a themed cake topper like Valentine's, Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, any of those, I do not use a font. I use an image from Design Space. I find a nice image and then I find ways to, ways to layer that image up or adjust the image slightly to get it how I want it to be. So this isn't a font. This is actually an image um, that I found in Design Space. So the image is M4778 C5 D3. So M4778 C5 D3. So this is it here. Happy Easter. And it's super, super cute. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide this for a second, guys, because I, I really want to show you how I'm going to work with this text. Now, I don't know if you notice, but the spacing on this image is different from my cake topper. So on my cake topper, the Easter is more up. And that's just because I, I like the layering, the overlapping. Personally, for me, I like the overlapping. So the other thing that you'll see with this is if you ungroup it, these are separate um, letters. Now, you're more than welcome to cut them out separately if you want to. Um, didn't get the egg, but I really want. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, and thank you, Oriana. I know you know my struggles. <laughs> my struggles are real, but anyway. Um, so now you could cut this out separately. Feel free to do so. But you know, I'm all about layers and depth, and you can only get layers and depth when you have full layers, if that makes sense. So. There's a couple of things that I'm going to do with this image to change it slightly. And I like to do these tutorials because I like to show you how you can take something from design space and just change it and tweak it to get it as you want. If you don't find it to be exactly what you want, you don't have to stick with what's in design space. There are so many amazing images in design space, but sometimes they might, the spacing might not be right, or you might want to take the Easter from another image and put it with this one. The possibilities are endless. If you know how to use the different tools in design space, you really can like create something that you like. And I often do that with cake toppers. I just bring lots of images together and make a cake topper. It's literally what I do. I don't design my own SVGs. I'm not that talented. 
Um, I just know how to work with images, how to use different tools, how to slice, how to contour to get things the way that I want them to be. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm personally going to slice out all of these letters, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm trying to remember how I did this now. I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab my layers. I've got my layers tool over here on the right. I'm going to grab the happy birthday. I'm going to press my shift key. I'm on my laptop and I'm going to press the very first egg that comes up for me, which is the white, which is the um, purple egg. And I'm going to slice. Right. You're going to see what's going to happen now. Now that I've sliced, I'm going to delete these parts. And I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to grab the whole happy. It's now, it's now just hap. There's no why. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to find my next egg and I'm going to slice. And then I'm going to delete these. Then I'm going to grab my hat. I'm going to go to the next one, which is green. I'm going to slice. And then I've got that one. And I'm going to go to my ha now. <laughs> I'm going to grab the next one, which is yellow. I'm going to slice that out. Then I'm going to go to the ha, H. And I'm going to go down to the very last egg. And then I'm going to slice. And what this will mean is I now, my machine is now going to cut this out. I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm going to grab this. Now, the good thing about, about Design Space now is they've got this combined in different layers. So, you know what, Joe Lux? Yes. I am not au fait with um, the combined tool. I'm going to be honest with you. I still can't get my head around it. Intersects and all of those things, I... So you've got all these options. You've got subtract, intersect, exclude. The only one that I use <laughs> is unite. That's it. <laughs> so I probably, I'm hoping that with time, I will learn how to use those better. But yes, you're right. I'm sure that there is a better way to do it, but that's just the way that I know how to do it. So that's how I'm going to do it for now. So I'm going to grab this Easter and I'm just going to make sure it's at the front and I'm going to move it up slightly. It's just for me, it's just preference. You don't have to do this. But when I'm, I want to apply an offset to all of this. And if you have if you have the Easter down here and you try to apply an offset, whatever offset, they're not going to link. Yeah. I want to do the least cutting. Hey, Kelsey, you know, I hate cutting. I don't want to cut any extra than I need to. So that's why I'm going to move this up, because when I move this up, what will happen? I'm just going to look and see where my T is. Um, it's actually quite high the way I did it. I'm going to put it all the way up there. Now, when I apply my lovely offset, you will see everything will connect, right? That's why I move things. That's why I personally move things closer together because it means that I have less cutting when I want to layer. That's just me being lazy. But anyway, <coughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply offset. Now I'm going to make this really big. I'm going to make this 30, 30 wide. Don't ask me why. If you apply an offset when it's small, say now. If I apply offset now and I say, oh, I'm going to make my offset 0 0.01, right? Actually, doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Normally, it wouldn't be that intricate. But if I was to make this really big and I make the offset 0 0.01, it's just, a, it's just a much thinner offset. So that's personally what I like to do. So I've applied an offset, my first offset. People always ask me, how many layers do I add with text? Um... I'm going to hide, oh gosh, no. I'm going to hide the contours, but I'm only going to hide these guys, right? These letters here, because we don't want, um, we don't want to be able to see behind these. Um, yeah, same. People always ask me, what is the rule of thumb around, um, Sorry, guys, I'm not doing very well here. 
around um, how many offsets. Normally about six, but you know, there's no right or wrong. So I'm gonna make this white. So that's my first offset. So I think in total for the text, I had the main text and five offsets. So that gives me six layers in total. So I'm just gonna apply that same offset four more times, right? So you don't, you just apply the offset. I'm not gonna make it, you know what? Sorry guys, I made it 0 0.1, it's gonna be too thin. You want a cross on? Okay, sorry, bear with me, I'm gonna go and get you the cross on. One second, are you hungry? Are you hungry? You're welcome. You're such a good girl. Right. Sorry about that. Right. Now, that 0 0.01 is going to be too thin. I've learned this the hard way. When you make it really big and you apply offset 0 0.01, it looks like it will be fine. But when you shrink it down and you cut it, the offset is really small. So let's make it 0 0.15, right? Make it 0 0.15. And I'm going to make it white. And I'm going to make sure that all of my contours in are why does it look like that? I closed that up. Something seems odd. One second, let's see what's happening here. <clears throat> oh, I'm going the wrong way. Oh, it didn't apply the offset to the whole thing. Okay. Ignore me, because I didn't. I think I didn't select everything. So now we're going to apply offset 0 0.015, right? Okay, that's fine. That doesn't seem like I need to change the back. So I'm going to make this white. I'm going to apply another offset. <clears throat> I'm going to make it a different yellow. No right or wrong way. I'm just going to do this until I have five offsets in total. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When I made this cake topper, I just did too much. I had about 25 mats. Like, it, it was quite ridiculous. And I was getting quite stressed out by this cake topper. Don't do that. <laughs> Try if you can to use the same colors if you can, but I'm just really just very over the top and I just do too much. But um, I just like to do that because it does look nicer. The more you use, the more different types of textures that you use, it's going to look nicer. But we all have to watch our mental health and not send ourselves over the edge. So, um, again, no right or wrong. I'm just I'm just picking random colors, right? So in total, you should have the main Happy Easter, and then you should have one, two, three, four, five offsets, right? So that's your Happy Easter. I've noticed, I think, now, there's some weird contour bits here that need to be closed out in the, um, in the text here. You see these little dot holes? Tiny little holes. It's just where the offset is picking up that something's been sliced out of that shape. So it's not a true offset. So now that's our happy Easter. So I'm going to group this together. And then I'm going to take it way down because it, I made it quite big. Um, oh, gosh. It's still quite big. So in total, let's make it. How long? How far big did that make it? 5.82. But like I said, no right or wrong. Let's see. Let's find our rest of our cake topper. Oh, I hid it. That's why I can't see it. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's better now. Right. Okay. So now we've got our happy Easter that goes here, right? Like this. Then next, let me cross this off. I've I've written something here and I have no idea. Oh, offset. I think it says offset. Okay. Right. So now we're going to do, I've done the text. Oh, I've done that. Right. Now we're going to do our grass. That's the last thing is our grass. So grass, we are going to get up. Um, hashtag M3. 
M308AE. M308AE. Go tissue then, baby. Right. So you get this, you get this um, grass. I'm just going to change the colours and I'm just going to mute them down a bit because I want it to be more um, pastel-y colours. Now, this is going to be a bit tricky because just I just changed this grass so many times. But let's try and make this 6.149 wide. Let's see how that looks. It's a tad big. Let's make it six wide. It's still a bit big. Let's make it 5.5 .5 wide. See, the problem I have, guys, is that when I'm designing, I, I go back and I change the design sometimes, and then I can't remember, I can't remember what I changed and how I changed it. So... Oh, gosh. One thing I do know for sure is that I wanted this grass to be tall. Tall. You can see that this grass is, is quite, um, what's the word? If I put this happy Easter on the front, you're not going to be able to see as much of the second layer of the, um, of the grass. So what I remember doing is I ungrouped it and... This guy, I untouched and I just made it quite a bit higher. So let's just make it three inches higher. Let's see what happens. Um, so what I'm doing here is effectively, I'm making this back part taller so I can move this grass up here so that there's more space for this to sit on so that you can see, you can see the second layer of the grass. Pardon? Where's the basketball? So I'm going to make this even taller. I'm going to make this 3.5 inches high and 5.5 inches wide. The width, you need to remain the same because you want to make sure that these two grass pieces match, right? So I think that's how I did it. And then I kind of just put it up here. Let me group them. And then I just kind of worked out obviously this is this um butterfly is going to go on top of your grass so don't worry if the grass and the butterfly meet because this butterfly is going to sit above so here's the grass now i don't know if you guys can see you probably can't if i zoom in maybe you can see but you want to make sure that you don't want to have it like this. See where you can see where the two grasses meet. You don't want that. You want to have it like this so that you can just see this other bit of green poking out. Uh, you might even want to um, move this one again slightly higher. So you're just kind of messing around with it until it's where you want it to be. Now, don't worry about how these match because we're going to do something in a minute to make sure that everything goes together nicely. So don't worry about um, the fact that there's all these gaps and that. We're going to sort that out. So like now, I'm trying to remember what I did to make to make sure that it wasn't. Um, let's make let's make this other grass a little bit taller. So let's ungroup. Do uh, let's ungroup, and I'm gonna make this other one. I'm gonna ungroup. I'm gonna um, not ungroup. Unlock. Make sure to keep the width the same. But let's make the height. Let's just make it. Oh gosh, no, no. Let's not make it that much because that changes it completely. But let's make it one point eight. Let's see what happens if we do that. Oh no, gosh. No, don't do that. <laughs> make sure you unlock. And then make the height 1.8. Let's see what happens. I think that might be better. Because then what you don't risk then is there being all these crazy gaps. 
right? So what I'm going to do, let me just zoom back out. I'm going to take the two graphs and I'm going to group them together. And then what I did was I duplicated this and then I use my combine and I unite. You could weld, but I just use them unite now because I just think, well, I've always got the option to go back. Uh, oh, no, you have to weld. Sorry. If you try to unite, you can't use contour. So you have to weld. I use unite first to make, and I make sure that I'm happy. And then I use weld. So I weld it. And then I go to my contour and I just close out this little one. It's just going to give us a bit more sturdiness and it's just going to make sure that we line up everything as perfectly as we can, our grass. So now we've got our grass. Oops. So now we have our grass and we're going to put our grass at the front. Now, these little feet, honestly, no right or wrong way. It's best to have them at the back because that's how you're going to stick them down. But, you know, what I like to do with the feet is take both the feet and make sure that you align at the bottom. So they give you the best symmetry that you can get. It might not be exactly perfect because it's two separate feet. If it was one image with two feet, it would be perfect. Does that make sense? But it's two, it's two feet that we've put, we've just positioned. So, you know, it looks pretty good to me. Then I'm going to arrange this and I'm going to send this to the front. Now, now I'm doing this, I can see that my feet need to be further back, further down. My feet are not. Um, so let me let me group my feet. Let me work with them in a group because I think that will be easier now. I've worked out. Um, um, I don't know what I did there. Let me grab both of my feet. I'm just going to group them. Oh, I don't know what's going on here doesn't want to be my friend to back group. Center the back. Right, let's um, put our grass roughly where we want it to be. Let's put our um, happy Easter roughly where we want it to be. Um, and then our feet, we want to be more down, right? We don't want our feet to be not visible, otherwise it'd be a bit sad. So... I might ungroup. Oh, I might ungroup the feet and um, just mess around with them a bit and just reposition them. Maybe let me. Sorry, let me group my grass and everything together because it just keeps moving around. So now we know we've got our grass and we've got our text as we want it to be. So the last thing that we need to do, really, is just work out our feet and how we want our feet to be positioned. Um, what I'm going to do is. Sorry, I'm just trying not to move this grass, but it keeps moving. Let me try and attach this to the circle and that should make it a little bit easier. Eek. Okay. My feet are not grouped. What is going on? <sighs> right, we're gonna move our feet down. Let's send it to the back. Not that far down. Should be all the way at the back. Arrange, bring forward. I don't know why it's not going all the way to the back. Oh, it is at the back. Okay. Um, so you just kind of want to position them so they look cute. I mean, I don't really know what to say, but yeah. So you can see the feet, but they're not. Um, looking at my one now to try and see. I think when I did it. Um, my Easter was a bit higher up, but I think it's just the way that I've done my grass. There you go. I'm going to make this a bit higher up. And now I'm going to... Sorry, I'm just rearranging. Now, do you know one thing that I didn't know, that even my 12-year-old son knew? I did not know this until the other day. And I'm going to do a real one it because I honestly did not know this. Let me know in the chat if you knew this. On your right-hand panel... If you move one of the objects on the layers to the top, it then becomes the first layer on your, I don't know how to describe it, but like, okay, let, let me say, for example, I had this flower by accident and I, and I sent the flower um, 
to the back, right? I accidentally sent the file to the back. I'd be faffing about. I'd be doing all that send to the back, send to the front, blah, 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 which I probably still do because it's just like ingrained in me. But if you grab that in your right hand panel and you move it up all the way up to the top of your canvas, it then becomes the top layer. Honestly, I did not know this. My son was like, yeah, didn't you know that, mum? I was like, no, I didn't know that. I mean, there's loads of images here, so it's going to take a long time. But what I was working on was a shadow box layered cake topper that literally had like seven layers. And when I was trying to um, change the layers around to make sure that it was in the right place, um, I just discovered it. So anyway, it's just something new that I discovered. I don't know if you guys know about that, but anyway. So now this is pretty much our cake topper done. Um, I'm just looking at these ears. I'm just trying to work out if they're in the center or not. Um, are you are you kidding me? What are you doing? But yeah, it looks okay. So this is our main cake topper, right? Um, I'm going to make sure that these are right at the back. Right, this is our main cake top arm. Now, what we're going to do is, because this is quite, let me tell you, let me see how tall it is. So this is 12 inches tall, which is quite tall. I, I, I ideally, you don't want it to be that tall. So let's see if I can get these feet up a bit. You, you don't want it to be that tall. It will be too tall. Um, I think my one ended up being... Let me get my other one up for you guys. You don't want it to be too tall just because, um, A, you have to have, like, really big cardstock, which I know, especially in the UK, we find it very difficult to get 12 by 12 cardstock. So I'm just quite conscious of that. Uh, okay. So you can see that my one, my this one looks a little bit fatter. This guy's a bit more chubbier. Um, so see, you can see it's not exactly the same. It's not exactly the same. I haven't applied the offsets yet, but you can see it's slightly different. And that's just because of the way that I did the ears. Um, and obviously when I'm doing the border, like I said, you can't really replicate it exactly. So, um, what it seems to me like is that this, I don't want it to be, so this is 11 inches high and this one is 11.11 .11 inches. So I want it to be shorter than this because I don't want it to be too too tall for you guys because if it's too tall, it's just not going to cut. Um, let me hide this one. So I'm going to see if there's a way that I can um, make this a bit shorter for you. And I know it's because of the ears and the way I've done the ears. And I was just really trying to save you from the slicing. But let's just do it because otherwise... Oh, Otherwise, it's going to be too tall, and I don't want it to be too tall for you guys. So what I'm going to do, I don't know why these two things are connected like this. Right, there we are. We're going to work with our ears. Let's do our ears. Let's align them and center them. And let me get my ears how I want them to be. Yeah, I want my ears to be, like, bigger, but I want my ears to be a bit lower down. Does that make sense? Because this is going to make our cake topper now. Now it's 11.218. So it's, it's slightly, um, it's slightly, slightly, what's the word? Shorter. So now I've made my ears. I'm going to make it a bit fatter. So now I've made my ears in total. Hey, Emma, how are you? In total, including the offset. 3.5.359 by 5.604. Now, I'm going to slice now, guys. The reason being is, as I said before, I don't want it to show through to the acetate. Well, I don't know why Design Space keeps doing this. Uh, I usually pick a shape that's similar to the shape that I want to slice out. I'm going to slice out all three of these layers. This is how I did it, because... If you slice out at the beginning, you can't contour to be able to add the offset and the pink layer. So I'm going to grab my oval 
and I'm going to go onto my panel and I'm going to find my first is wherever they may be on there somewhere. Right. Find my uh, first is and I'm going to slice. Right. Now, the important thing is with this, you go back to the shape that you just sliced out and you, you weld it back together. The reason being is that it's going to be in exactly the same space. So when you weld, when you slice the next layer, it's going to be exactly the same slice. You'll see me do this on my uh, Holy Communion cake topper, I think is something. This is a technique that I use. But like the lady said before, you may be able to use intersect and all of that jazz. But I don't know how to use that. I'm going to pretend that I know. So I'm going to go to the pink layer and I'm going to, and I'm going to slice. Then I'm going to weld that back together, the same um, shape. And then I'm going to grab that again. And then I'm going to slice out my last, um, my last is. I, I may have lost you guys completely at this point, but <coughs> this is just the easiest way to do it. Right. So. I'm going to go ahead and delete everything that I don't need. I'm going to send this to the back. And then I'm going to send... Um, I'm going to send this to the front. Now, this is going to be my ears, right? So now my ears are going to go here. I'm going to send these to the back. Make sure that you can't see them through the acetate, which you can't. <clears throat> got my acetate here and I'm going to send my acetate to the back so now my cake topper is, is not as tall you just don't really want a tall cake topper other reason being is that it will be very un it, it will be very unsteady it will be very unsteady it will be un it won't be sturdy it won't be as sturdy as you want it to be if it's super tall um so I would just try to avoid that if you can bring to the front okay so this is our main cake topper now what we need to make sure that we do <coughs> is I'm trying to remember how many how many I did I'm trying to remember how I did this okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to group this and then I'm going to duplicate. When I duplicate, I'm going to ungroup. And I'm going to delete everything except for the, um, how does I do it? I'm trying to remember how I did it. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, I'm going to delete everything. But I'm going to leave the main, um, so I'm going to delete the flowers and I'm going to delete the um, the butterfly because those are the only things that we stick on freehand. They're not welded into any part of the shape, so we really don't need to have them in. And I'm also going to delete my acetate. If you had, if you, if you didn't have an acetate, if you have a, if you have a solid layer at the back, you would keep one of those layers, but you would delete the acetate if that makes sense. I'm going to take this and then I'm going to um, weld it together. So what this is effectively going to do is it's going to show me where I need to position everything. Yeah. When I start adding it on. But I'm still going to have all of my separate parts. Yeah. So I'm just going to ungroup my other one because I can't actually remember um, how I did it now. Yay. This is why it takes me so long to make cake toppers because this process that I'm going through with you guys, this is normally what I would do when I'm designing and making a cake topper. It takes a long time. So I'm not going to come here and pretend that everything is fine and dandy and, you know, because it's, it's not. <laughs> it's very complicated. I'm just trying to work out my layers here and remember uh, what layers I had um, ungroup. Oh, group again. I grouped too many times. Everything is grouped. 
So what have I got here? Slice result, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I just have the offset and the two. I just want to make sure that I'm doing this, everything. Okay. Yeah, I was doing it right. I just want to double check. Yeah? I do. I You want it? Right, let me just hide this now. So, um, I was just trying to work out what I did. But all I did was, yeah, I did it right. All I did was, I've got this. Now, this is the main part of our cake topper, right? It's the exact shadow. And then on this, I'm going to apply two offsets. So, I'm going to apply one offset and I'm going to make it, Let's try 0 0.015. That tends to be my default, right? Now, important note. You can see here that my offset is also going inside, right? Now, you can do that if you want, but what that effectively is going to mean is that you're going to have less shaker space. The shaker space here is already quite limited. There's not a lot of shaker space here. So the way that I get around that is like I want to apply an offset but I don't want it to go inside of the shape. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but I don't want this black part to be on the inside. I only want it to be on the outside, right? So I need to duplicate this so I can keep, um, not that one, sorry. I need to duplicate the white one or do I? I'm just gonna duplicate it anyway, just to be on the, on the safe side. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these two and I'm gonna slice, right? Now, when I slice, yeah, I do need to duplicate. When I slice, I'm going to go to the slice shape and I'm going to go to my contour. And I'm going to hide everything. All I want from this is I want to have this, I want to clip this second part. So all I'm going to have is the outline. I don't want any of this part on the inside. I just want the outline. So the outline now, so can you see that you no longer, you don't have anything on the inside of your shaker. You only have on the outside. That's what I want. I want the shape to go out. I probably could do it by hiding. Maybe, I don't know. This is the way I've always done it, right? I'm going to change the color now. And I'm going to take these two and I'm going to weld them. Right? So that's going to give me an offset where it's slightly bigger on the outside, but it's not in fact affecting the inside of my shaker because I don't want my shaker space to get smaller. I want it to be quite intricate in there. I don't want to have loads of layers inside of my shaker. But if you wanted to, you could totally do it that way. So that's my first layer. So I'm just going to show you guys by sending to the back so you can just see that that's my first offset, right? Now I'm going to repeat that process again. But I'm going to do that with the blue layer. So I'm going to duplicate this because I want to keep this one. Right? Because that, that one is right. I'm going to send that to the back. And then I'm going to create the same offset, 0 0.015. I'm going to make this pink. You don't have to change the color yet. I'm going to take these two. Yes, baby. And I'm going to slice. Then I'm going to go to the shape that I've sliced. Oh, Lord, my laptop. Quick. Because this laptop... As soon as it says it needs to charge, it will die immediately. So I need to quickly quick. Sorry if you just saw my pajama buttons. <laughs> oh, that's what happens when you work from home. You dress nice on the top and then on the bottom you just got pajamas. But anyway, so did I slice it? I don't know if I sliced. Yes, I did. So I'm going to go to the slice result. I'm going to go to my contour. I'll show you again. I'm going to go to my contour. I'm going to hide all and I'm just going to click the second shape, which leaves me with my outline. And I'm going to combine these two and I'm going to weld them. That's going to give me my pink offset. I'm going to send that to the back. Now, in theory, I should be able to align center and group. Here is the finished cake topper which is as close to this one as I can get it. It's not exactly the same, but it's pretty similar. Um, 
And those offsets might be a bit big. They might be okay. Um, I think 0 0.01 or 0 point, you could try it, you could try it 0 0.12 if you want a more intricate offset. But yeah, <clears throat> here is the cake topper. So it's finished now. Um, I hope that you have learned something new today um, from this tutorial. And as I said before, we are going to assemble together on the uh, Wednesday, the 5th of April at 9 p.m. my time, whatever time that is where you are in the world. So it'll be the same time as um, this live is today. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing this now so I can just... come up here okay so we are going to assemble together on the 5th of april at 9 p.m uh, again it will be recorded so if you're not able to make it not to worry you'll be able to watch it back um i have got an amazon materials list that you can find um in loads of places link in my bio normally is where you can find it i've also added some um, information on my community tabs on my YouTube. If you go over to community, you'll be able to find a tab. It takes you to my Amazon storefront. You know, I'm always an advocate for trying to use whatever you have. So if you have got stuff, just try and use what you have. Don't feel pressured to buy anything new. We know we all have enough car supplies. We don't need to buy anything new. Um, but if there's anything in particular that you don't have um, that you want to buy, then obviously, you know, you can go and have a look and see at some of the things that I use. I know that sometimes people from other parts of the world, when I add things to my Amazon storefront, you might it might not work for you because it might not be available in your country. So if you have that happen, just let me know. And I've got a load of lovely crafty friends in the US who I can kind of send them, um, say, hey, someone in the US is looking for this foam tape or whatever it may be, and that they could send me the link from their Amazon storefront of where you can get it in the US. So if you click on it and it says, oh, this isn't available in your country, then please just reach out to me, DM me on Instagram. Um, and then I can see if I can find you um, alternative um, from alternative from Amazon. But equally, you know, not everything I get is from Amazon. Um, it's just the easiest way for me to share materials with you guys. Um, like I've got these really cute, like little tube like these little confetti oh god i've got a hole in my shaker um these little circle ones and i got them from a shop in the uk called the works and i haven't been able to find them again um so you know it, it is not necessarily everything that i have is from amazon uh would be great what types of glue do you use so um you're gonna join us so eve's gonna join us with her runny nose so um yeah so the glues that I use, um, I use Bailey Arts glue. Um, on my Amazon storefront, I have got um, Art Glitter glue because that is the only one that's available on Amazon in the UK. But I use Bailey Arts glue, which you can buy very easily in the US. Sit down. Got some water. Got some water. Yeah, look. Got mommy's water. Careful, careful. So um, yeah, I use Bailey Arts glue which um you can you you can get now in the uk from bumble i always forget her name bumblebee crafts if you go to my stories on instagram and you go to like supplies or something like that i've linked it in one of the stories um go and get tissue go get tissue for nose. i've linked it in one of the stories so you can now get it in the uk and then the other glue that i use is beacons three in one glue I use that a lot, especially um, with kind of acetate and other things that I'm sticking down. It's just a different type of glue that I like that's more slidey. That one is very easy to get on Amazon. Um, actually, I don't think I, I don't think I ever add that to my Amazon product list. Now that you say that, I don't. And I use that glue a lot. Those are the two glues that I use. But you can use art glitter glue um, as well. That's an option. It's a cheaper option, especially if you're in the UK. You just need to buy the metal tips separately, which will allow you to um, 
which will allow you to work with intricate um with more intricate things so but when we're cutting um we can have a chat bumbleberry yeah yeah Bum bumbleberry uk or um i personally haven't bought from them yet because my belly arts glue is still going strong um i bought some when i was in canada in the summer and i've got a refill and it lasts for ages but they also sell the foamies i believe which i really do want to try um so belly arts have now got some foamies that are super thick um so you can get them from this barely bum bum bumbleberry um hi lisa thank you for joining um so yeah that's it really so thank you guys and i will see some of you on wednesday um i hope you found this helpful and i hope that you learned something new and i will hopefully be going live again soon take care <laughs> bye what are you doing